Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back with another round of the Reddit Championship Series. This is the fourth round of contention. We are pretty deep in Swiss, uh, only a couple remain, and I am joined once again by my illustrious co-commentator, Sir Eminon. How are you doing today? Doing it pretty well. Uh, we are slowly dwindling the number of decks that are not named Adam Emancipator and Eldritch, <laughs> but we have managed to find two of them for you here today. Uh, that being uh, Machina Orcist, and uh, we also got True King Dinosaur. Uh, and these are two very interesting lists uh, that we have gotten to see. Uh, one of which is obviously playing the heavy Machina package, which is essentially a roundabout way of searching Scrap Recycler which is, of course, the gateway to accessing all the Orcus cards. Meanwhile, we got a dinosaur list that is not only playing the Needle Fiber and Aurorodon shenanigans, but also playing Podb Extravagance. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were looking at uh, the decks beforehand, and I got to tell you, no one uh, throws their fear to the wind like dinosaur players. This is an extravagance list with six one-ofs in the extra. Uh, they're not uh, They're not like non-critical cards either. Some of them are combo pieces. <laughs> No, sometimes you just gotta show the game no respect. I, uh, I and suppose so. It'll eventually reward your bravery. Um, but uh, both of these players are playing uh, what could be considered off-meta, uh, but both of them, of course, are also playing some cards uh, that we have all come to know, love, and recognize at a moment's glance. Um, the Dinosaur deck is concerned first and foremost with going through Adamancipator-adjacent er, lines in um, Halkafibrax and Auroradon, and uh, the Orcist uh, player is looking to do uh, extremely powerful setups with not only the Machina cards, but also the newly released Gearsu, the Orcist Mech Knight. Right, and these combo lines have gotten a lot more interesting as well with the release of Lib, the World Key Blade Master. Uh, so, like, all of these cards in tandem with one another make for some very potent one or two card combos. Um, and notably, both of these duelists were actually undefeated going into this round. This was from Table 2. Uh, so this should be a pretty a relatively high quality match, considering that neither of these players have opted for the obvious two frontrunners of the format. Yeah, um, and I only hope our commentary can uh, do it justice. Um, it looks like Frozen Lava Reflector has won the die roll, so we will be seeing just what Orcist can do on the play. And this is, I mean, I'm, I'm not a super experienced Orcist pilot, but I'd expect this is a pretty good hand. Yeah, we got Return plus Nightmare as well as a Gearsu opener. Oh, wait, so. did they choose uh, second? Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what uh, combos this uh, Auroradon Dino deck aims to do. All right. So we're going to pick up a Baby Ceresaurus off the Fossil Day to immediately pop it off of this uh, Tricking with Osa gem here. Uh, thank you for saying that name. I still cannot pronounce this. Um, <laughs> always fantastic when you're able to draw your one of. Uh, Baby Ceresaurus, of course, uh, the most powerful pop target with this individual card. We're going to go into another Baby Ceresaurus and follow it up with a Dragonic Diagram. That's going to pop yeah, the baby. So what's better than drawing a one of? We draw two one ofs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um,. For what it's worth, uh, the one of usually searches the other one, so it's not that broken, uh, but it's still extremely good. We'll use Overaptor's effect here in order to get a copy of Miscellaneous Horus to hand. Oh, wow, that just happens to be a fire monster. Yeah, so it looks like, if nothing else, we're going to very, very easily set up for a True King of All Calamities play, but it looks like we're just instead going to use Miscellaneous Saurus's hand effect to protect our board and then its graveyard effect to grab a Baby Saurus from deck, uh, which we can trigger once again because we have not used Overaptor's other effect, I do believe. Always frightening when your opponent has a known True King of All Calamities and they refuse to go into it. It's like, how much worse could it possibly get? The third baby will trigger here, and the Jurak Aeolo is unfortunately uh, for the Orcist pilot, a tuner monster. So uh, we are going to see what happens next, but uh, I think we kind of know already. Uh, oh, oh, or we could uh, just, or not. Into <laughs> just straight into a Trishula. Why not? Wow, here I am. I'm like, okay, and here's where you make the Halka Fibrax, and then you make the Aurordon. No, we're just making Trish. See, this is proof that Extravagance doesn't conflict with your extra deck, because you simply just make Trish instead. All right, uh, we are going to go ahead and banish this copy of Gearsu. That's a pretty sweet hit. And then uh, afterwards, I think uh, we're going to likely see an overlay for True King of All Calamities and a pass back. And in many cases, this is good enough. So uh, we'll see how well Orcus can contend. 
And called Dark, absolutely, we'll use Orchestrated Return in order to send a copy of Nightmare to Graveyard. Notably, hand effects can still activate under Calamities, so these Earth monsters might get a chance to shine. All right, we'll see if uh, we'll be doing anything. Looks like not, unfortunately. So play passes back to Dino, who also picked up a Jet Synchron. So oh, nice. we got more combos on the way. No, no, no. This is the interaction. Jet Synchron is fire. It's part of an Enigma Zud combo. It's it's not broken. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So it looks like nothing's happening in standby phase. We're just going to detach for a light to play around Nibiru and try and pop off as much as humanly possible. Dragonic Diagram, of course, going to be met by a Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, pretty good news for the Orchest player, but I do not think it will be enough. Uh, afterwards, of course, we can go into any number of extremely powerful plays, but most of them start with a Jet Synchron and, whoa, just attacking? Surely we can do better than that. Huh, well, it looks like we are actually not playing a Link Rebo on the side of, uh, on the side of Dino. Whoa, zero fear. And we zero refuse fear. to Link away, up oh, until main phase two, that is. All right, here comes Salka Fibrax in 001. You know what's happening next. It's Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. This is the card that a lot of people slept on and I think has really proven itself as an extremely powerful force. We'll summon three tokens to our side of the field, followed by the 001 from the graveyard. And then afterwards, we're going to start making plays. All right, and because of the nature of this extravagance extra deck, there are a very limited number of synchro monsters to go into, notably... There is two copies of Borwood Savage Dragon, a Herald of the Arclay, and Trishula, and those are the only synchros. So because we are locked into non-link summoning, we are forced into the Herald plus Savage Play, which was probably like the initial breakout road on combo yeah. for the other champions with like Garden Rose Maiden were figured out. But yeah. this is pretty good if we were to ignore the Dark Ruler No More sitting in the Orcus <laughs> player's hand right now. So, uh, shockingly, they might actually be able to pop off here. It's it's extremely frustrating that this copy of uh, Girsu is banished and not in the graveyard. Otherwise, the Monster Reborn really could come in clutch. But Dark Ruler No More going to clean up the monsters that are lurking on field and potentially going to be able to engineer a scenario uh, for the Orchest player to get their plays off. Uh, discarding the Mega Forum for the Irradiator, targeting himself. That Irradiator is going to bring back the Mega Forum. Uh, stop me if you've seen this play before. Yep, looks like we're going to go ahead and summon the Metal Crunch, which is literally just a way to say reveal three scrap recycler and add one to your hand. So that is about what we're going to do right now. And then we're just going to fully pop off on our Orcus combo. And you guys have seen this. This is the Scrap Orcus combo, of course. So we're going to pop our opponent's board on the way to assembling our own. Wow, um, that Dark Ruler No More has really unlocked the board and kind of sealed this game up. Uh, I, I can't help but feel as if they were on a Link Karibo in the extra deck, this would already be over. Uh, we're going to activate Golem uh, to get back this scrap and fire it off for the second time this turn. Uh, sending another card to the graveyard here. Uh, looks like it's going to be a World Legacy World Wand, and now we have everything necessary to go into a copy of Lib. So we're going to go ahead and grab, I would presume, a free copy of World Legacy Succession, which brings back Scrap Golem once again uh, in most iterations of this combo. And then we get to Trigger Recycler again, because, you know, who needs hard ones for turns when you can have, you know, fun and interactive gameplay? Well, hold up. Uh, how is someone going to activate the effect of Scrap Recycler more than once per turn? I mean, think about that. It's blasphemous. All, All right, right so Appaloosa coming down. Appaloosa, here we go. So we can't OTK this turn because we're under Dark Ruler, but we can very easily engineer a scenario in which it's impossible for our opponent to get back into the game. We'll go ahead and fire Wand off the copy of Wand. Bring back the... Uh, it could have actually brought back the Gearsy that was banished off the Trishula, which would have been really funny. Oh, wait, really? That's hilarious. Uh, going for the Nightmare instead. Uh, the stars line up perfectly for a Savage Dragon equipped with a Scrap Wyvern. Uh, we're going to skeleton back this copy of Nightmare, and then we'll make ourselves a copy of Galatee. So all of that before even summoning the flagship Link monster of the Orcus deck. And we are just going to go ahead and clear up the rest of this board and pretty much sit here because we are under not very much pressure uh, this given rocks. how little follow-up the Dino player seems to have at this point. Yeah, we can easily summon back Gizmek, go back into another copy of Galatea if we uh, so desire. Or, uh, we could go with the Mascarena as well. We, yeah. Yep, there we go. That is the pick. And uh, we've got access to Ding. We've got three monster negates. We've got an Omni negate. Good luck. And, and wow. that is going to be a swift concession 
going right into game number two here. So uh, despite a what would seem like a relatively successful opening from Dino uh, with True King of All Calamities hitting the board, um, a successful comeback from Orcus with off the back of the Dark Ruler No More, uh, I mean, really showcasing what a single card can open up to a combo or into deck. It's not often you see a Trish activation into a VFD into a loss. Uh, but hey, <laughs> sometimes it happens. Uh, looks like Frozen Lava Reflector going second once again. Uh, Dinosaur going first is a little odd, um, but you probably uh, don't feel comfortable with an opponent who is uh, able to mount a board as sticky as Orcists. All right, so we've drawn Severitation, which means we could go for a Diagram plays if we wanted to, or we could alternatively go for a Lost World setup first with this Overraptor uh, being added to hand off of the Fossil Digs. So with no hand traps on the side of uh, the Orcus player, uh, we are going to see yet again a full iteration of whatever combo uh, the Dino player decides to assemble. So um, the way that Soul Eating Overraptor and Lost World interact particularly is just extremely frustrating. Uh, Overraptor does not have to target a dinosaur you control. Uh, so it can target the token that you have summoned to your opponent's side of the field and then use the replacement effect of Lost World to destroy a baby Sarasaurus in your deck, uh, popping off into further extension. Here we're going to go into a Giant Rex and likely end on something like a Dolka. And this heavily or handily plays around Nibiru or any other hand traps. Um, so we can go ahead and fire off this miscellaneous source to get the Archosaur and pop the baby in her hand to grab not only the double evolution pill, but also another additional dino. Uh, this could be, of course, Dracaelo if we want to go into Halka Fibrex, which is likely going to be the play here. Wow, this is looking really powerful. I know a lot of people thought that Animadorned Archosaur was going to push Dinosaur to the top tier of contention, and while it largely hasn't, you know, this is a really strong setup tool. From here, we can go into an Aurorodon, and we can pop off just a little bit further. A Dolka plus a Savage Dragon plus a Herald under Lost World seems pretty hard to beat. Yeah, in most cases, uh, this should spell the end of the game. Uh, provided that we don't see any other blowout cards akin to a Dark Ruler no more. Yeah, uh, Dark Ruler off the top, of course, would uh, resolve a lot of this board. Uh, Urgent Schedule gets Material on field, but really doesn't do anything outside of that. All right, and there is also a distinct lack of direct Orcus cards in this hand, so um, it's going to be pretty tricky to follow up. And uh, here comes the Pièce de Résistance, the Herald of the Arclight, the onboard semi-macro cosmos that makes playing as Orcus such a hassle. And it looks like the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is not going to be summoned, nor is the Double Evolution Pill going to be used, probably holding those resources for a bigger push, thinking that this board is sufficient, which in the majority of cases it should be. Yeah, I think uh, actively playing around Dark Ruler No More is probably fine when that's likely the only card that's going to resolve this board. We'll fire off the Urgent Schedule. It'll be met with the Borload Savage Dragon activation, and I guess the Gizmek is coming down next. That could be Dolkud quite easily. Yeah, not really too many options if you are looking at this hand, unfortunately. Yeah, um, this is so Dolka, it. Yeah, pretty free. Not once per turn negation, of course. And it looks like Monster Reborn will go ahead and reborn the Auroradon. Or, no, he's going to reborn Gizmek. All right. All right, it'll be met with a Herald of the Arclight, and uh, Orchestrated Return will now be live, so we'll go ahead and fire that off as well. Draw a couple of cards. Ooh, a redeployment is good. I don't know if it's enough. Yeah, the question is, can we play through a second Dolka activation? My Dolka is so strong. It's not once per turn. It's not once per chain. There's just so much that it does. All right, and it looks like Radiator actually uh, resolved. Wow. Okay. From here, right, we're going to go into like... a Link Karibo, uh linking off the Lost World token here. And uh, Tribute Summoning a Machina Metal Form. Wow, that is... That's something. No, well... Punching over the copy of Dolka so we can play a main phase two. And uh, if it were for the fact that we had to tribute summon for that, this would be uh, the full combo. Because um, this can go ahead and get Metal Crunch for a Scrap Recycler. But <laughs> Metal Crunch, no targets remaining in deck? Oh, wow. That must have been a terrible Gizmek. And oh, oh yeah, was it? And <sighs> with that, uh, with that follow-up in hand, we got... We get to see a lot of damage going uh, going for the Dino player here. 
I would imagine this so, is the end of the game, yeah. Definitely has to be game at this point. All right, Giant Rex, back to the field. It's going to have a ton of attack, and the Lost World will be cutting the Metal Cruncher to 23. Uh, I think this is the end of the game uh, on board right now. Double Evo Pill adding insult yeah, to injury here. Yeah, Giant Rex can now conveniently attack over the Metal Crunch, uh, which makes it so that its restriction of not being able to attack directly doesn't even matter. And we have well over 10,000 additional damage to the face. Wow. And that is definitely going to be the game. Uh, the Citadel activation in Graveyard negated by Savage Dragon as well. Uh, just leaving one negate on field more than enough to wrap this one up. Uh, firing up the Gizmak. Ooh. Yeah. Even with Gizmak, I do think this is still the end of the game because uh, this is a thousand damage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then this would be uh, Oro Savage taking it home. Okay. Um... Well, uh, that was just about as well as Orcist could have played, given the circumstances. Uh, you don't often have to play through uh, that much interaction, and uh, they did it pretty admirably, but unfortunately weren't able to convert into a playable board. All right, well, now we are going to see Orcist go first for the first time. Oh my god, we uh, drew Gearsu. We drew Gearsu. Uh, even though we drew two going second cards, that is, Gearsu is generally enough to be a play. Uh, looks like the Orcist player is not on the world arm combo, uh, so this is like more of you know just going straight up for the uh, Orcus combo directly, uh, but we will see that take place where we're going to send the World Wand, and then go for the Summon of Nightmare back going into Galatea, and uh, this is just pretty basic Orcus stuff. Uh, yeah, to be honest. Fantastic that uh, Gearsu represents a one card full combo. Uh, looking at Babel real quick, uh, looks like we are going to go ahead and activate it before going into a copy of. Uh, the one, the only, Dingirsu, sending that token to the graveyard. It turns on evenly. Why would you do it? Next, they're going to go into oh, a copy of IP Mascarena, and this is fine. Yeah, this could be enough, honestly, in a lot of cases. <laughs> Sixth card, Nibiru. Uh, always. Okay, well, Pot of Extravagance, I imagine, is going to come down first. And... Looks like there's not going to be any response, so we are going to go ahead and pick up uh, Evenly, which, uh, <laughs> as you just pointed out, was turned on because of the uh, you know the Degusu sending the token away, and now we will see how badly this gets punished. Uh, it's there's pluses and minuses. You know, the token plus a normal summoned tuner turns into a Halka Fibrax. There's a lot of reasons you would want to prevent them from using the token, uh, but Evenly Matched is such a powerful card, especially against this deck in particular. Looks like end of main, we're going to activate the effect of Nightmare on Mascarena to get ourselves a copy of Symbol Skeleton in the graveyard, and then proceed to battle phase and fire off an Evenly Matched. Presumably keeping the Babel on the field so we can have at least another interruption, um, or one interruption, rather. And with that hand, we have a lot of uh, a lot of monsters. Uh, yeah. Starting off with the uh, summon of the best one being Overraptor in that hand. Uh, we are going to be able to pop off pretty well because, of course, Miscellaneous Source is, again, a fire. Ooh, it looks like we're going to skeleton for Gearsu here. Uh, this is in response to the Enigma Zud activation, uh, which will trigger, and then Gearsu will trigger as well, as will the effect of O-Lion. So we'll bring back a token and send a copy of Nightmare to the graveyard. All right, so that might have been in response to the uh, Fire Tree King being revealed, because you don't have to reveal what you're destroying at the time of activation. So because Enigma Zud can actually banish uh, monsters from graveyard as well, um, you know, that might have been the, you know, the ticket to try and at least recur some of the engine. Yeah, um, that's a really powerful thing to be able to threaten, even if you're not on a high number of fire targets. Looks like we're going here into Herald of the Arclight from the Mecha Phantom Beast token and a Jurak Aeolo and a pass. Whoa, there had to be more you could do than that. Yeah, so it looks like this Herald of the Arclight is actually not going to be getting a lot of value because we can simply just go into the battle phase and beat over it. And then afterwards, you're still down on monsters. The urgent schedule is live. We'll go ahead and fire that off as well. I don't think there are a lot of targets remaining in deck. Obviously, Citadel is the one that you summon the most often, but no big deal to get something like an Irradiator in its place. Yeah, and getting Scrap Recycler, even though its effects are negated, uh, we can just go right ahead and go into a Scrap Wyvern, or we could 
Um, I didn't quite catch what happened there. Uh, <laughs> that was a tribute summon of Machina Citadel, but unfortunately for the uh, Machina Orchestra player, Machina Citadel cannot be normal summoned. Why? I, I do not know. I could not explain to you why. <laughs> oh, this is called uh, Card Design in 2020. <laughs> Oy. All right, instead, I suppose we'll just do the Scrap Wyvern combo without uh, committing the gear suit to the graveyard to get the Citadel. We're going to bring back this copy of Recycler and then destroy it. And we'll use the second effect of Wyvern to bring back Golem and then use Golem's effect to bring back Recycler. Uh, just kidding, we're going to be hit by a huge Nibiru. Uh, this isn't the end of the world, assuming we're on Link Spider or some way to get value after getting Nibiru because we haven't used any of our orchestra effects yet. So... Uh, we have Nightmare Engraver that I believe was sent off the gear suit the previous turn. Uh, so we can send a wand, bring back something, and uh, just continue on. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, really the most important uh, question still remaining is uh, if they're on a Link Spider in the extra deck. So uh, if they can uh, navigate this combo and make their normal Orcist play, they are out of the woods. Otherwise, it is going to be very frightening. Fire off and you one see here. a deck lockdown come Oof. down uh in from the side deck here oh uh, so and we'll see how effective pass. this is against dino whoa Ooh. okay well deck lockdown is okay but not in this scenario we know they have the ultimate conductor tyranno in hand both of these monsters are in defense i mean this looks like a pretty easy cleanup all right so the si i don't believe there is a symbol in the graveyard because that one was the one that was banished previously uh so ultimate conductor tyranno just gonna come right down yeah um, sure and this is just going to be a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, so there's a thousand damage from the uh, first send. Uh, and then a pass back. Uh, not willing to commit to the symbol skeleton activation in the graveyard. That's one on deck lockdown. All right. So a pick up a scrap recycler is also very, very powerful here. Uh, and we're going to crash our symbol. <laughs> well, it, it beats and... taking 3000, I suppose. Get it in there, summon Nigirsu, and then get rid of this uh, conductor, uh, which cannot activate, of course, because it's in the battle phase. Uh, so Scrap Recycle will come down next uh, to go ahead and send more resources. Another copy of Wand will do the job. And we will go ahead and summon back Nightmare to go into Galatea. And, and uh, now we just have we just have all of our resources yet again. Yeah, this is the end uh, of the game. Uh, we're going to be able to set a copy of Orcus to Crescendo, and this Nibiru is all that stands between the Orcus player and a, an undefeated record. All right, and just picking up more cards that aren't uh, immediate play starters, which is pretty unfortunate if you are on the side of Dino here. Um, yeah, the tree games are really, really out. strong, but only if you've got a full grip. Yeah, no real meaningful play here. Uh, it looks like we're just going to have to try and attack over, I would assume, would be Dingirsu. Yeah, um, uh, Galati, of course, uh, immune to battle because it's linked. No, just going in for damage. It's, what, 1,200? And then in damage, yeah. Calc will activate the effect of Nightmare. I don't think we can put it over, but uh, sending Skeleton means we're only taking 900 from this attack. Yeah, I mean, really not a whole lot to be done here at this point. Um, looks like Galatea will go ahead and shovel back Nightmare to get a return, and this is just going to spell infinitely more resources than what we're already uh, have access to, and just getting access to an Armageddon Knight on either player's turn is exactly what this deck needed more. Yeah, um, from this position you can do just about anything. Uh, I don't think you're fearing any individual card. Uh, a set one telegraphs an extremely weak hand. Uh, this Gearsu, by the way... Um, it uh they're, they're calling it a tuner yeah because two or more cards were in the column when it was summoned extremely uh, so cool it actually becomes a tuner <laughs> so uh, i i suppose if they want they could go to halka fibrax plays but i don't think it'll be necessary yeah so at this point you honestly can just uh do whatever you want really uh um, yeah. you can go for boros sword you can go for access code if you're on it you can go for a savage if you're hilarious <laughs> if you're really feeling spicy uh, you, you could almost say that that was savage. Haha. <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna All fire right. off this return, draw a couple of cards. Megaform plus Citadel. Oh, finally. 
Uh, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and activate some graveyard effects, I'd imagine. We've still got a ding in there. It's not locked in there for long. We'll activate a world wands effect in order to bring back this copy of symbol skeleton, then send these two to the graveyard in order to get a copy of long Gearsu. Not going to screw with that set card. Just going to get rid of it as soon as possible. Yeah, this is definitely uh, the end of the game here. You have to imagine. Uh, I don't believe we use symbol yet either. Yep, so we can go for a Galatea. Uh, and go for a Dingersu just to send away that Nibiru. And this is 26 plus 18 is 44 plus 3,000 plus half of Scrap Wyvern, which I do think is just over lethal. Yep, it's about 250 over, and that's going to be a clean victory for Frozen Lava Reflector, going to an undefeated record with Orcus, a deck that I think a lot of people had high hopes for, but it has not yet been converting on them. Uh, that's going to do us for the end of round four. Uh, any final thoughts? Yeah, I just think that, um, you know, the potency of these decks that are, you know, definitely a clear gap below the top two, but have the potential to compete even in this current metagame, uh, we get to see on full display, especially in these earlier rounds. And it's really nice to see these players performing really, really well uh, and showcasing what their decks are capable of doing. So uh, that's going to be it from us here. Yeah, uh, could not have said it better myself. Um, if you're interested in following the continued adventures of the Reddit Championship series, uh, be sure to subscribe to Sir Eminon's channel as well. There's going to be a link to that in the description where you can see round five, and we will be back shortly with more exciting meta action. See you soon.